Right, gentlemen, as you know, this is a bit of a crisis, probably worse than two years ago. So I've invited you here for emergency talks. Any idea is on the table. Nom, what have you got for me? Nom, that is genuinely the worst idea I've ever heard. And besides, where would we get that many hamsters from at this short notice? What about you, Alan? You're quieter than usual. Got any big ideas for us? What, nothing? Okay, I guess it's just down to me then. So let's not beat around the bush. Here's the run of form that we're on, and it is terrible since our last episode. Things have gone disastrously wrong. We've plummeted down the table. In fact, only a win in our second most recent match has kept us out of the relegation zone. We are in no form at all, and we've tried everything tactically. We've gone narrow. We've done diamonds. We've gone back to what worked for us in the past. And nothing really seems to be working. And every team we play at the moment is just seeing us as easy pickings. Let's show you the long, harrowing story of where it all went wrong. So in our last episode, you saw us beating bottom of the table Alumini 1-0. An unimpressive performance, but three points nonetheless. And in our next game, we beat third place Tabul Shajana 2-1 with a brace from Valencic before notching up our second victory this season against local rivals Dom Jala. And then, out of nowhere, we were poor in our next game in a desperate performance against Maribor. And this 2-0 defeat to Maribor started a desperate run. We managed to lose 2-1 to an Aluminium side who we'd beaten in the previous episode, before taking a point in a 1-1 draw with Bravo. We then got battered in a 3-1 defeat to a strong Olympia side before losing 1-0 to bottom of the table Triglav and then 3-0 to the Tellia side that had replaced Triglav at the bottom of the table. For good measure, throw in a 2-0 loss to Copa and a 3-0 loss to a Maribor side who were down to 10 men for most of the game. Unfortunately, right now, we are... Terrible. Throw into the mix, exiting the Slovenian Cup at the first time of asking to Copa as well. And our season is pretty much over. And to add insult to what will inevitably be yet another injury today, we're back to face Dom Jala, who we never beat when we bring you back to face them. So where on earth has it all gone wrong? Well, I don't think it's all tactical, to be honest. A lot of it, I think, is to do with dynamics. We have several unhappy players who are upsetting everybody else at the club. The team leaders are arriving at my door on almost a weekly basis. Let's run you through the main protagonist. First, Christian Sheepek has become unhappy that he's not getting as much game time as he thinks he deserves, and his pals at the top of the hierarchy are just oh so keen to let me know that they think he should be starting as well. So we've upset some of the team leaders, as is inevitable in FM23. There doesn't seem to be an option that you can click on that ever pacifies the situation. So we're bombing Sheepek out. Lots of clubs came in for him, including Slovan Bratislava, which is perhaps an illustration that maybe has a little bit more potential than we were originally thinking. But he's gone now. He's dead to us. We've got rid of him and hopefully... After the winter break, that might allow things to just settle down a little, but it's not just the veterans that have been causing trouble. Oh, no, 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 no. It's also the youngsters. So Mataya Kaucic cannot wait to leave this club. He's got one foot out of the door already. We've got Debrecen that are interested in him, as well as Greuterfurt in the German leagues. And they haven't made offers yet, but the window will be open in just a couple of weeks' time. And he is desperate to get away. He sees himself as much better than this club, even though his performances have stunk to high heavens for a couple of months now. So much so, I'm actually dropping him from the first team today. But he has a brother in arms in the form of Martin Ivacic, who first just wanted a new contract, which I was glad to give him, but his agent insisted on a minimum fee release clause that we could not remove that was minuscule. And seeing as he had, what, three years still left on his contract, we weren't going to dance with that particular devil. But that led to him becoming unhappy. Now there's interest in his services as well. 
Clubs have been making offers for him in the last transfer window and may well come back during the next transfer window. And so he wants to leave, partly because he's desperate for a new contract. But when you offer him one, the minimum fee release clause would be a gift to those clubs that are circling to try and recruit him. So we have a very, very unhappy camp at the moment. And tactically, we are lost in the wilderness. Just before we show you our lineup for today's game, cast your eyes on this. This might be the limpest, most disappointing youth report we've had from our head of youth development yet. They are branding it as a below average intake. We could have done without that. Everybody is either an F grade, an E grade, or at best, we've got a C grade winger coming through. What a duff batch this looks. I think we're going to have to go through the next couple of seasons relying on what we've already got at the club. So what are we going to do about it? Well, we're going back to basics. Two games ago, we beat Tabul Zhejana playing a 4-3-3, very similar to what we were playing in the old days, and it worked for us. We looked good, we performed well, we kept the same formation for the last game against Maribor, and we had some chances. We lost the game 3-0, and it was disappointing because their first goal was a penalty, then they had a man sent off, and they still added two further goals to their score but we had chances as well. So we're going to stick with it today, but we're going to try and remove some of the players who are most upset at the club. We're going to keep Ivacic in, primarily because Simon Gregorine has got the flu at the moment. Otherwise, he would be starting out there and Ivacic would be out the squad. And we're dropping Mataya Kalcic down to the bench. He needs a rest anyway, but he's a miserable, sulky little so-and-so at the moment. So instead, we're going to be bringing in young Yuri Novak, who is not a bad player, although is wildly inconsistent. He's currently two leagues below us in terms of the level that he's playing at. But there's plenty of potential in him, allegedly. And he's got good strength and he's got good stamina. And somewhere here it mentions that he's got good timing in the tackle. So those are not the worst attributes for an anchorman at the base of your midfield. Puchko could do with a rest as well. He's another youngster that we have hopes for, but at the moment has been putting in some very squiffy performances. You saw the mix-up that he had with Alan Schiefer, who's also playing for us today, where the two of them collided and Maribor scored a second goal against us. Well, we've been playing Sifa purely because our first-choice goalie, Giga Firmashek, had been terrible and was just letting in goal after goal after goal with some of the floppiest wrists you've ever seen. So we bought in young Allen, and he's not really been that much better, but he has bags of potential, as the interest from Maribor and Copa allegedly is showing us and we've got to develop him at some point or another, so why not in the midst of the biggest crisis we've had since we've taken over? Now, we all know who we're playing today, and we all know how they've done against us last season, but we've actually beaten them twice in the two games that we've played against them this season. Can we make it three out of three? No, I doubt it too. We're not the only team that performed well last season that's struggling this as Domjala find themselves down in fourth, having lifted the title with that don't remind me victory on the last day of last season. But you'll see that deadly marksman Arnel Jakupovic is all the way down in seventh place when it comes to goals this season. In fact, he's doing so bad that even dirty Denis Valencic is outscoring him. But after a poor start to the season, Domjala seem to be back and have won six of their last seven games. They'll be confident about taking another victory against their tiny neighbours as Domjala host Dob. Here we go then, we're lining up for another derby against Domjala, these rarely go well. And we have made a little change to the lineup. We played forward another day since we last spoke to you. And Simon Gregorin returned back from his flu. And we've thrown him straight into the starting lineup in place of Martin Ivacic. So we shouldn't have any of our most miserable antagonistic players out on the pitch today for this huge derby. We're not a million miles away from the relegation zone. We'll show you the table at the end of the game. If we lose, we might even be in that relegation zone come the final whistle. 
And we are not a million miles away, I think, from having some tough conversations with the board because we went on a four-game spell where we couldn't even score a goal. In three games running, we had an XG of 0.0, .0 no matter how attacking I went. I think when the dynamics are against you in the squad, any kind of unity, fluidity, just kind of goes out of the window and we just looked absolutely terrible time after time after time. And when we got chances, people like Valencic would throw in finishes like the one you've just seen that went a good eight yards wide of the goal. We have at least had an attacking highlight, though, because we haven't had that many of those since we saw you last. And here is young Valencic again without any real pace, I'm fearing, from Dennis. He has to take that effort early. But that's three shots. One of them has at least troubled the goalkeeper. We've seen the two that haven't. And on 18 minutes, we have yet another highlight. It looks like it could be for Domjala. And there is that man, Jakubovic. I think he was offside. But there's Alan Sifa. No, not you, Alan. Alan Sifa in action. And we have huge hopes for him as a goalkeeper. The fact that he's only played, what, maybe four or five games for us. I thought we'd just given away a penalty, but we haven't. The fact that he's only made four or five appearances, and yet Maribor and Copa are both interested in acquiring him in the transfer window, has got to speak to the potential that he's got. And we're going to try and develop him. And he's already averaging a 7.3 in this game. So maybe young Allen might be a player that we can just help to develop, nurture, and build into a first-team player as we look to try and add more of our youngsters to the first-team squad as veterans like Sheepek become more and more disgruntled and end up leaving, and players like Ivan Makovets from last season decide that they're too good for the club and depart on free transfers when their contracts eventually expire. We've had a decent first half here against Domjala, and we've managed to win the ball again. We've sent it forward and lost it, but won it back again in the midfield. Gajic, well, heads it to the opposition, then goes and regains, and then goes wandering into the middle of the pitch, and here's Dennis again. Take three, Dennis. And take three is no better than the first two. Unfortunately, Dennis is a little off colour today. But we have at least got a corner. Gaic is going to swing it in to absolutely nobody. What's happened to our corners? I think they might have reset themselves. We've got nobody on the post trying to head them home. But despite very similar XGs, we've had seven shots to our opponents too. They've not been great efforts by the look of the XG, but still... We've been probing, and we need to try and find a breakthrough in the second half. Okay, we had a quick set-piece training session at halftime. Turns out, with my latest tactical meddling, I've not actually added any defensive or attacking set-piece routines. We've rectified that now. Wouldn't it be just if we actually conceded from a corner in the second half and lost the game 1-0? I jest, of course, as Domjala win a corner. And here we go. I wish I'd not said anything. And I was very nearly the prophet of my own downfall there. Okay. Domjala look like they're working their way back into the game. But here is young Novak. He's sprayed another pass and we're in. And even Dirty Dennis can't miss those. We're checking for offside flags. The referee's running back to the center circle. It's going to count. And that is a big goal. And we've actually got some players in our defense who are playing fairly well today. And that wasn't a bad sprayed pass from young Novak, was it? And Gajic feeds Valentic and we've tapped it home. Not a good first half for young Novak. He's on a 6.5 as things stand. He's not even the main replacement we see for Mataya Kaucic, by the way. If Kaucic ends up leaving, there's a guy in the under-19s who's still only 16, doesn't turn 17 until May. They've got another corner, brace yourselves. He doesn't turn 17 until May got away with them. He doesn't turn 17 until May, but he is branded as the club's key prospect. So he could be another good player in the midfield. That's got to be a sending off, by the way. Trying to bully young Novak there. And Novak has got his opponent sent off. And we might be able to go on and secure a draw at least. Maybe only lose by the occasional odd goal. As Domjala are now trailing 1-0 and have 10 men. We're never any good when we play 10 men. We're never any good when we play with 10 men either. doesn't matter who the sending off is for. 
we always seem to lose the game as Valencic has another decent effort. He spurned that chance as well and put it round the post. But we're pressing once more, I think. We're not. Novac gives the ball away. And Dom Jala are coming clear. Does anybody want to close him down and challenge? Or shall we just jog next to him? Okay, we'll do the latter. We'll let him go all the way into the box. Shall we bring him down? Oh my goodness, we've brought him down. One man has taken on five of our players, run unchallenged through them all, and then Pushko gets bored of watching and decides to hack him down when he's on the byline. He's not going to score from there, but from the penalty spot, it's going to be you-know-who, isn't it? It's not! It's Shoisha Gigan. It doesn't matter that it's not Jakubovic. They've equalised for Dom Jala. What are we doing, gentlemen? We were in a winning position and our opponents were down to 10 men and we've given away such a soft penalty as you tend to do when morale in the squad is not great and we've now got to try and find another goal to avoid the embarrassment of a draw. I'm almost tempted to say a draw might not be the worst that we could do because Amjala are now going to be Feeling like their tails are up a little bit, I fear, and might even press for a winner as Kasnich slips in Gregory. There's a man that's had flu for the last 10 days. A terrible, terrible finish. We're behind on the XG to 10 man Domjala. I think we need to make some substitutions. So we've called for the Sulkers. Kaucic is on in midfield. Ivacic is on in place of Gregory over on the wing. Can one of the Sulky duo? Find us a winner in the last 15 minutes of this game. Dennis is running through for the umpteenth time. He's hit a post. It's run along the goal line. How unlucky can poor old Dennis get? He scored once, but really should have had a hat trick this afternoon. But we're not done yet. We try to play a ball in behind their defence. It's gone to our opponents. We win it again. And here is Kalchic, booked already. Heads it straight to his opponent. He's got sending off written all over him here, hasn't he? This is what players do when they're unhappy at the club. They spite you. And he very nearly cost us a goal with his negligible defending. And again, we've got another highlight. We've thrown it in the box this time. And this well, is going to be VAR reviewed. But we've got a far post header from Mitrovic that we would dearly love to count because I feel like we deserve three points from this game. And Gaic has supplied both of our goals. A man who's been out in the cold for a while. And we've still got time to play in this game. 88, 89. Let's pause. We're going to throw on some time wasting and lower the tempo and lower the passing and be more disciplined and try and see out the game. Here we go. Four minutes to play of injury time. This is absolutely a proper highlight as Pucho sends it over the top. Here he is. Come on, Sulks. No, did not fancy that challenge at all. It was a poor first touch and he could have still slid in on the goalkeeper and made things difficult. Instead, he thought, well, I could be moving during the transfer window. I don't want to pick up an injury as Gaic is hacked down. We've got 10 seconds left of injury time. This could be our third win in a row this season against Domjala. If we'd have picked up just one of those victories against them last season, we'd have been champions and this save would be over. Unfortunately, well, that didn't happen, but we've at least taken nine points from a possible nine against them this season. Let's see whether that's helped us to climb into mid-table safety. Just about. Just about. And such is the ridiculousness of the league that we are in. We are now just one point outside of the European places, despite going seven games without a victory. We've got a much-needed rest coming up. I think we might have found a formation that we might return to and stick with for a little bit. And we're going to show you what kind of form we are in when we come back for the next episode of The Dobfather, where we'll be showing you our latest youth intake.